come deep inside the belly of Tim Horton's field. Underneath the stands, the Forge Audio Network presents The Captain's Log with Kyle Becker and Mitch Houlihan. Presented by Bench Brewing. All right, Captain's Log, Season 1, Episode 6. Uh, we're back, brought to you by Bench Brewing. Here with Kyle, number 10 in your program, number 1 in your hearts, Kyle Edward Becker. <laughs> Hey, bud. What's up? Have you said brewing correctly? Brewing? It's, okay, it's tough. You think about it? I think you say it wrong every time. You're saying it right, but it doesn't <clears> sound good. I also keep forgetting to look up his uh, bench brewing. <laughs> See? Yeah, Bre- you think no, about it. Brewing it's... or uh, brewery? <laughs> brewery. All right, anyways. But I did have an idea after the last one the yeah. uh, for the commercial we're going to do. Yeah. We were talking about the three in the front. Three abreast. Bench beer, three in the front. So non-alcoholic beers are a big thing right now. Are they? Put out the driver. Ooh. As you were saying, two, and then we'll yeah. find the two for the other ones, and then the driver. How has no one thought of it? That's clever. Because we're clever. That's it. Yeah. All right. That's why they pay us the big bucks. Yep. An alcohol brand, the driver. Because drinking and driving is yeah, bad. Yeah, an inside uh, high school joke of ours. It'll fly off the shelves. <laughs> Guy, who was that an inside joke with? What do you mean? The whole thing. Just the three in the front. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the fly. in the bench You, seat. you phrased oh, yeah, that no, like the our... fly off the shelves was an inside joke, and that was terrible. It's all right. Miscommunication. Stick and move. No, we should. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Stick and move. Um, all right. So we're back. Back in the donut box for episode six. A couple weeks off. Yeah. Um, the numbers came in. Actually. They're big. Come on. <laughs> No, they're not. I don't know. Uh, no, I don't know. But today's all about positivity, as always. So we're staying positive. The numbers are big. Numbers are huge. Um, big boss Dave called down. We're doing good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Winnipeg. Yeah. Start off, as always, a little, uh, little recap. Big win in Winnipeg. Yeah. Big six-point weekend for Hamilton over uh, over Winnipeg. Ticats won, which is massive. And then, uh, yeah, we... Uh, Finally did the business in uh, at IG Field for the first time since uh, 2019. Really? Hard to believe. First win in Winnipeg since then. Yeah. Awful. We haven't had the best track record against them, which is, which is tough. But uh, no, it was big. That was huge, especially in the old final push. Yeah. Tried our best to, to pee our pants a little bit there with the, that shaky going 2-1 down. Suspect call by the refs. But it's what it is. We battled back. Oh yeah, the uh, yeah my guy Debrienne. Yeah, the old ref said. Uh, what did you see on that one? I mean, G had the ball, but it is what it is. It's a it's a quick one. It was a bang bang play. Yeah, but like they're so definitively being like he didn't have possession. How can you call that? You pulled it out anyways. Yeah, we should go. Like I said before too, you're just a big body in the wall. It's in your spot. <laughs> yeah. You got bad a bangy. Yeah, smashing in the. Uh, and Unreal. you're just you're two just, for two. Causing a ruckus in the wall. Big frame. Anything else in Winnipeg? Uh, yeah. Pretty much the worst travel day of all time. Travel day? Heading down there. Just airports. I feel like we've, we might have talked about the airports on the old podcast before. I don't know, but I would say that's... That big. was on the episode that got cut. Ooh. Yeah. The entire episode <laughs> that got cut. <laughs> but yeah. Dude, we get there. I think we were supposed to take off at 5.30. I don't think we left till like 8 o'clock. Just getting the classic 15-minute delay at a time. <laughs> Just, they're the worst. On the way there or back? Yeah. No, on the way there. Got there real late. Quick oh. turnaround. That airport story for sure got cut. Remember the... Uh, the guy in Halifax? Oh, yeah. Should we, I think, th- should we bring I think that you one back? Tell that, yeah. All right. It was a good one. Yeah. So, not a big fan of the old airports. Not a big fan of the way... I think people... The way they operate in airplanes is just questionable. People lost their mind. I think the big the big thing of the story was the one positive thing I'm flying in COVID is we somehow realized that when you get off a plane, if we just do it by rows, it's so much more efficient. Yeah. And you just do it by blocks and everyone sits down. Cause then you avoid the classic, the flight lands, and people just jump up at the back of the plane and just start flying up. So we were going out to Halifax and I was in an aisle and the guy in the aisle beside me. Nice little East Coast boy, older fella, legendary accent. <laughs> he was, he was hilarious. Had like classic old school guy. Had absolutely nothing on him, 
plane plane takes off and he was just staring at the back of the seat the entire flight no i don't even think he had a phone no nothing just just dead stare no chance he even reclined the seat at all and so we land and there's this uh some dude probably around our age a little bit of a bag of milk uh clearly dressed like he was uh gonna go play a round of golf with the boys like had his best polo and quarter zip on ready to go literally flight lands and he's just like seatbelt off and he's just grabbed a suitcase and he's flying up and he stops in between me and this guy and you could just tell right away this guy wasn't having that he was so upset like just what, what just doing a bunch of like huffing and puffing so we're walking off the plane and it was me the guy who jumped up with the suitcase and then the older guy behind me in like a three and we're walking out and the guy's just like hey what are you doing that for <laughs> the guy just like the young dude in the middle is just ignoring him. he's like hey I'm talking to you. What are you doing that for? The guy's like, man, I got to take a shit. <laughs> and, the dude, and like, that's when I turned around. I just started dying laughing. I'm like, no way. This guy just used that. And the best part is the old guy's like, well, what do you think they have bathrooms on the plane for? <laughs> just like, yeah, I'm pretty sure taking a dump on a plane is way worse than, uh, than what he did. But yeah, that was uh, that was classic. Yeah, all time line. Yeah. That's a line now. Yeah. What are you doing that for? Bathrooms on the plane for it. <laughs> that was class. Um, all right, let's get into so just a couple uh just a couple shout outs to start off the positivity pod. Positive pod, what, what do you got? got? Anything? <laughs> uh no, you go first. I think we planned that you were supposed to go first. What do you got? Uh <laughs> we're gonna go with no, I okay. I can help you out if you need something. Yeah, yeah, give me some give me some help. I actually forget now too though. Number one. Shout out, Guelph. You ever been there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whereabouts? Like just in general. <laughs> yeah, I I I didn't know about it. <laughs> you, I was you didn't there know about this Guelph. morning. I don't know. It's just it's nice. It's pi- picturesque. This is gonna. I think this might lead into some stuff. But is is water down Guelph or is that are they separate? No, that's not Guelph they're at the, all. They're the same thing. Is no? it close? Not what are you talking about? It's like not even close. Water down, yeah. Dub Down's just north of, uh, Guelph is no, the yeah, highway, bro. which highway? 401. Guelph's way up there. It's way up there. Jesus Christ. But it's, it's a, it's a nice day. little town. Yeah? It's like, it's got a bunch of old buildings, and it's got the university, <laughs> and, uh. It's like Bruges. Also, that, like, downtown strip during, uh, during school year is definitely electric. Like, there's just, like, on the main street, there's just, like, four, like, you know, you got your Irish pub concept. You got your like country <laughs> bar, probably like I don't know, like some teal tequila, tequila club or something. <laughs> did you when you guys did you play Guelph? In- no, they're in the they're in the other division. Yes, how does that work? And I've never heard U-sports. anyone talk about like going to Guelph or anything. It's just like I don't know, whatever. It's just nice up yeah, there. We don't our, need to get into it. None of our buds went to Guelph, huh? No, but yeah, nice little town. Is Guelph a good school? Do we just hang out with a bunch of idiots? The Griffins. Like, is it a hard school to get into? I don't know. Yeah, moving on. Yeah. What else you got? What's your favorite city? <laughs> <laughs> Not that it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's favorite city is cool. <laughs> favorite city, huh? <sighs> what do I like? What All right, I'll like? slip a shout out in there, too. Our guys, we didn't even introduce them. Yeah. Zach, Hawk. Legends. Yep. Hawk was telling always a good story here doing before, the thing. Uh, before the podcast, but we, yeah. won't, we won't get into that. Hawk always brings, brings a story. Legend. Brings yeah. a smile. Brings a smile. Positivity before the pod. podcast. Bring Hawk in. Everyone's laughing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What else you got? Got, uh, got a fan in attendance today. We'll make a wish guy over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, his big wedding week, so he wanted to come in and sit on the podcast. Yeah. Big yeah. shout out. Big shout out to old Marky Viola. Oh, that that's that's good. Brings out another shout out. BN local. We went there last night for the old rehearsal dinner. Oh yeah, where's that? Great little restaurant. Where? Also, uh, it's here. It's like well, down the street. <laughs> <laughs> just down the street. No, so listen to this. Uh, they just obviously make like the uh, cool hipster cocktails, like change it up all the time. What'd you get? It old fashioned. <laughs> so, listen to this. Yeah. Uh, the old. Uh, Cocktail of the day yesterday happened to be the Forged in Fire. Come on. So we both ordered. Did you make that up? No. Yeah, okay. that's what I just had. So we both, uh, not together, like we both had the same conversation with the uh, with the waitress. Like, yeah, I'll get an old-fashioned. And then she's like, 
can I uh, just bring the forged and fire to your attention? Very similar, but a lot of booze. And she was like, so maybe save it for the end of the night. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> incorrect okay. can you put them all in a jug and just bring the jug to my yeah. table please uh yeah so the old forged and fire at the bn local yeah food was uh sharp too but yeah those are some thick drinks that's nice um but yeah celebrating our guy uh yeah we can just jump down too i think he's we gonna be our... do a we'll do a throwback shout out because the drinking just you're talking shout about out to old... drinking <laughs> shout out to drinking we're talking about a thick drink remember back in the in the day rocking a nice camelback playing some <laughs> nhl 50 50 ginger ale and cc in the back ryan ginger in Easy the back dr- hands-free drinking buddy 100 percent. yeah this guy yeah legendary it's a good it's good a uh, nice little trick mm-hmm. yeah for those who are of age <laughs> uh yeah so shout out to wedding week and mark's uh this is our this is our wedding gift to him he gets to sit on the pod. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't expect anything you're on the weekend so, yeah pretty good yeah you're well you're well <laughs> <laughs> no but we uh, we should uh bring up he's going to be our resident engineer we're going to bring him back in for chats <laughs> about uh <laughs> yeah how do you feel about the infrastructure of the stadium so far first walk through under here yeah so Can Carla, Carla King, King, yeah. <laughs> so Carla, surprise, surprise. Mark's gonna have a goose egg on his forehead, and he's gonna look like King <laughs> Cust for the wedding. Nice. Oh, look, I have hard hats written down here. So I was like Defasco, Ooh. hard hats. Oh, yeah, well, he has yeah. many times. He's got the. Um, he's the the leader, leaderboard. Most yeah. knocks, most bumps. I like. We should. Uh, we'll we'll get you back in for some of those chats. The steel slabs. You know what what happens in there. Shovel, shovel in the cock. Darts and coffees in the uh, in the trailers with the boys. Work trailers, you know? Yeah. Like the office. What? Ever been on a construction site? <laughs> Highly <laughs> doubt it. Yeah, when me and you made oh, a deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be later in season. I think season two, that's, that's <laughs> that story is going to come out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty good. But, oh, okay, yeah. That's, oh, this is perfect. We're cooking. Um just like uh, Mark's our uh, resident engineer here, we're the resident. Oh, yeah, if anyone wants to call in, have any questions <laughs> about engineering or anything, or just anything in general, Mark's, Mark's a good guy. Yeah. Last, last, yeah, just a quick congrats to Mark and Carla this weekend coming up. Boom. Uh, just like uh, Mark's our resident engineer, we're the resident car guys. <laughs> Nailed it. We're on fire. Uh, you want to tell think about it? Can you think of a shout out? I'm going to read our conversation. Yeah, I would like to give a shout out to Castrol Edge. They make uh, some fine syn- uh, synthetic motor oil. Yeah. Used it yesterday. Got the old 10W30. Splurged, buddy. None of that 5W30 stuff. Yeah. Nothing but the best for the old <laughs> well, 2015, well, actually... 2015 Golf, bud. Yeah, thanks. Took the restrictor plate off, give the Red Dragon a little more juice. But uh, let's keep that on the down low. It's not exactly street legal. Unreal. Are you going to read the, read the old exchange oh, or are you yeah. just going to move on? Oh, yeah. And, like, I feel like we got to preface this. Like, you're a worse car guy than me, for sure. I would I'm actually say you're a pretty guy. good car guy. <laughs> I can change a spark plug. Yeah, you know that's... what Kenny Upole is? I actually called them last week. Kenny Upes? Looking, yeah, looking for a window regulator. <laughs> oh, dude. First off, before we get into that, is that because of when we were pulling into the Labor Day game and you ripped your window out? Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this dude, he picks me up. We're, ri- we're ripping down, coming down into Hamilton to, to make the tailgate before the Labor Day game. And he's like, it is sweltering. And we're just windows up. And I'm looking, I'm like, guys, so uh, what are we doing here? He's like, no, it can, only, it can only crack it a little bit. Windows are broken. It's fine. You just pull it down. So like, all right, whatever. The AC is kind of kicking in. We're good. We're making it. We're pulling into the parking lot, and this guy's like gearing up to pay the guy to get in. And he's like, he's just, as he's turning, he's taking taking a left turn, trying to pull the window down. Pulls it. The window just goes full <laughs> sideways and rips into the door. And he's like, whoa, that's not good. So I was like, all right, I j- I get out of the car and physically get the ticket and pay the guy. Meanwhile, this guy's just in the thing, just jamming it around. We're fine. I actually got a, we skirted that one, so it was okay. Window got back up, but yeah, just push her back up. So what? Else? There's just like a triangle of the corner window <laughs> sticking. Out. Somehow it didn't shatter, which was the best part. Yeah. But so what? Old Kenny Youps have to say about the old regulator? Just got to turn her over. Ah, oh, you just got to find uh, find a lot with the car you need and go uh, get your part. What? You gotta like steal it? 
Yeah, you go in and get your own part. So if your car gets towed, it's just like, or is this like a just no? Empty it's lot? not like a t- it's not like a tow lot where like <laughs> like you get towed for pretty, parking and then that'd be pretty better sweet. come quick. No, people not are coming that's in not to what steal I'm saying. It's just like a like this car just shows up and like it's just like a lot. It's so a car, just, yeah, it's yeah. a car car junkyard, auto yard. Is that what Kenny Yupol is? It's a car yard. Yeah, yeah. So you can just you get pull scrap up. parts. Yeah, car parts. <laughs> the name's Zelinsky. I make car parts for the American working man because that's what I am. And that's who I care about. <laughs> Kenny Yoop's car parts. <laughs> Did you go and pick some up? Nah, I don't know. Yeah, nothing. Yet. It's still fine. Oh yeah, the car, the car <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so this is the, this is the, uh, this is the brilliant exchange we had yesterday. Started off in the group chat first. Yeah. Then we you guys some- ever top your oil up yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Got the old check oil level light. That's different from oil change, you know? Then <laughs> Lee goes, like, do an oil change or just pour some in? <laughs> Pete, Pete used, to, used to do that, I remember, like, just pop some in. Some in and then I go, all the time. <laughs> and then you go, <laughs> with all that enthusiasm. I uh, feel like I just need a top suey. I got some KMs before the next change. <laughs> yeah, just dump a whole bottle in there. <laughs> What kind of stuff I need. And then I think, uh, I don't know, so later when you're actually uh, getting into the mechanic stuff. All right, <laughs> what kind of stuff do I need? Uh, I don't know, I'll look her up. Probably your standard 50-30 uh, W. Yeah. And then a uh, couple other things. Oh, yeah. Where am I dumping this oil? Because <laughs> I was asking before I actually like popped the hood and looked at it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I know. Just, I need that, a little reference. Yeah, that part makes uh makes it sound worse. But yeah. I was, <laughs> but my my response wasn't <laughs> the most technical. Just in the circle. <laughs> <laughs> but because obviously, expect but what you, everyone but to what know you, yeah. what, a, what a oil cap looks like. Well, I to be fair, I had no idea when you sent the picture of what the oil cap okay. was going to be. Yeah. I was shocked to know that it was literally identical. To what you said. I didn't know it was like a car by car thing. I didn't know what it was going to be. <laughs> like they're all the exact same. They got the same shit. Uh, car talk. <laughs> all right. Just in the circle. Twist off. Right atop the engine. Probably near the dipstick. <laughs> he goes, all right. I'm not under the hood yet. I'll let you know. Just <laughs> just picked up the Astro Glide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sweating. Uh, and I sent a picture of the uh, picture of the cap. Yeah, you're looking for this. Uh, do I gotta fuck around with the dipstick? <laughs> nah. How much am I dumping? <laughs> and then, oh, then I check the dipstick. <laughs> is it empty? Take her out. Wipe wipe it off. Dunk it again and see how far up she is. Uh, yellow thing. The stick. <laughs> Uh, yeah, LOL. It was like a drip on the tip. <laughs> it was nothing. Baby. And was I dry. said, uh, I'm sweating. My guy used to legit turn the bottle upside down and just let her dump. Like two full ones. So pour in uh, most, just pour the entire guy. That's one liter. It takes like at least five. Just dump her. There you go. Car guy crushing it. If the light's gone, I'm going to feel great about this. <laughs> and then just, fuck. <laughs> car guys <laughs> turned her on light was gone dude the best part is is i walked out and so the car was on the street and i uh i grabbed like a just like a little cloth because i just assumed i was gonna be spilling shit everywhere but i just popped her in the back back pocket car guys <laughs> <laughs> like 100 percent walking out pop that back there everyone's gonna pop the hood everyone's gonna drive by car guy he knows what he's doing just Change his oil on the street. Oil on your <laughs> I just wipe it on my face. <laughs> oh, I've been working so hard all day. Classic. You know what? When when it works out, it works out. Work we're clicking today. Yeah. Look at this next point. So, what's the last shout out? Uh, I got nothing. Last shout out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we <laughs> talked about this. You, you talked about this. Yeah. We got to shout out our boy Jackie. Absolutely yeah. crushing it at the old Sens golf tourney. Long drive. Yeah, Legend. yeah. Got invited. Uh, whatever. We were up there, so then he they sprung it on him. He was doing the uh, was doing the old ceremonial tee off for the yeah. whole tourney. Like, 
But anyway, so right before I was, I was texting you. Mm. Remember the line that like and Jack love. I always tell him this is the line that you sent like the last time. Hey, buddy. Pressures for tires. <laughs> car guys. Because you're a car guy. That's it, no dude. such thing as this pressure. Just... Pressures for tires. Pressures for tires. <laughs> That's unbelievable. The thing is, though, if I had to do that ceremonial tee off, I would have been peeing down the leg. Yeah. Okay. All those all those TSN cameras behind him, the whole Sens team, the front office is up there, and this guy just struts up and just yabos. Yeah. So What a beauty. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, that'll take us into uh, – and it's some chats, so unless you got some more more shout outs. I think that was it. No, that's good. We're good. Um, that's the chat that we've been uh, having the last couple weeks. Positivity? A little bit of, well, yeah, always positivity. Yeah, but, be positive, uh, guys. Bit of, I would love a top up. For this bit coffee. of um, coffee? Yeah. Always behind the cameras. You guys want a <laughs> sure. nice, refreshing Tim Hortons coffee? Yeah. Extra grinds in mind, please. <laughs> Can't take this guy anywhere. Uh, nah. So the uh, yo, getting some some chats, kind of similar to last week. Like, uh, what were we talking about last week? More leadership stuff. What you've what what's different? What are you doing different now than before? Mm. But this has been a, this is a good chat we've had the last couple of weeks. Just, um, I mean, kind of pressure, kind of uh, just dealing with uh, dealing with the preparation, with like the the day to day and stuff, like the longevity of a season. I think is a is a right. tough one. Um, yeah, it was just it was just getting. Yeah, over. I think it's and then just like looking back at myself, um, it's like we've we've talked about before when you when you first make that jump, you're obviously you're going to be one of the important guys on whatever team you're on. You're counted on. You're playing probably big minutes. You're relied on. <clears throat> you're playing week in and week out, and people are people like or you, sorry, you're confident. You believe in yourself. All that stuff. You're feeling great. You make the jump. The second you don't necessarily start playing week in and week out, first thing you do, a little doubt creeps in. Obviously, a little bit of frustration. And I think uh, at times when you you get caught pointing the finger, you end up missing like clear opportunities that you can have to – just all the things that are going on in the, it, throughout the course of a te- uh, season within a team. And you miss Like opportunities chance, like – Like to get big minutes just because of the things that are happening. So mm. the big one – for me, in hindsight, and it's it's one that I've, I've told guys on this team for sure, and over the over the four years we've been playing, is like you're not necessarily a starter in the beginning of the season, but like just see it out. You never know what happens, guys. When you have bigger rosters, guys move on, guys get traded, guys go to different teams. Maybe if you're not doing so great, a new coach comes in, and like that can just be enough to give you a new lease on life, because you never know how it goes. A coach might like you over this kind of player for whatever reason, even before you get like you've done anything in training. But injuries, injuries and suspensions are like the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. And you never know when they happen. And it's crazy for like you look at our our team in our league with such small rosters, every single player, whether they're playing a lot in the beginning or not, like the starting lineup is going to change drastically throughout the course of a season. And I think we uh, we have the perfect example of this um, coming into this this last game against Winnipeg, but even even against the, the last home game against Calgary. And it's you have a. You have guys who U twenty one. We need U twenty one minutes. So if you haven't necessarily, if you're a younger guy and you haven't really been playing, like you know, you're gonna get a chance. Mm. Whether it's fifteen minutes, ten minutes, whatever it is, like be ready to take that chance. And have you been doing everything you need to be doing throughout the season so far, so that when you get your chance, there's no one to turn around and be like, you're checking all the boxes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, the big one for us, thank you, was you get a guy in Quasi who gets a. A red card in uh, in Vancouver. So you know for a fact the defender, he's not there next two games. He's done for sure. Dom goes down against Calgary, center back. He's does does his does his calf. We don't really know what it is at the time, but like he goes down injured. You never know long how or you never know how long he's going to be out for. You're another center back. Garvin was with the national team at the time. You're a young guy. You're a defender. You're like this is my chance. You have to have that best week of training that you've had all all year to show that you're ready because. With four or five games left, you come in, you put a performance. When we're in need of wins and all of these things, you potentially could be seeing yourself into playing time the rest of the season. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you're playing the most important games with the most eyes on you, going into the playoffs, potentially play- starting and playing in a playoff game. And it's like those things, I think, can get lost in the shuffle because you're a young guy. You want to show up. You're like, I want it now. And like, you want it now in the third game of the season. But in hindsight, if you're like, if I was just doing the right stuff and I got, 
75 minutes in this game and I was fit and I did everything and I was great. Okay, you can excuse sharpness if you haven't been playing, that's fine. But if you're not fit, you're cramping, you're doing all this stuff, it's like you will realize a year, two years, three years down the road, like you're the one to blame for that. And that's that's just tough. And it's like I look back on certain certain performances that I had and it's like I'm not happy about how I played, but then it was like was I for the month or two leading up to it just pointing the finger being like oh poor me i'm not playing i'm better than this guy yeah yeah yeah. but am i doing all the stuff to make sure that when i get that chance i just take it right and like and it's that like staying ready for it like because it's also like i mean it's natural too like if you when you when you get that shot and you mess it up someone else's it, fault yeah it's like well I, I, you know it's oh, like, i wasn't playing yeah if i was playing every single week i right. would have been fit or i would have like, done this and it's yeah. and i'm Which i'm is, only saying that because i've been guilty of it like everyone yeah it's, that's like and it's the, it's the worst and yeah part of it is you have to go through it and you have to fall on your face and then you have to have like the self-awareness to look back and and be like yep hand up i need to do that better and then you you make those those changes and you see it in like in any locker room with older guys who you're like, how is this guy still doing this? He's never really been a starter, but it's like the way he conducts himself. He's so professional. He's there. And then you get, he, and then the, the season ends. It's like, oh, well, he played 20, 20 games. Like that's still a huge chunk. And especially if you're a good team, you need guys who come off the bench and are willing to do a job. And it's, it's crazy. I, I think back to, to the year I've had in San Fran and we had this guy, Greg Jordan. He wasn't the best, best player ever, but he was so professional in what he did. Yeah. And just his attitude showing up. I never knew the guy. I never knew where he was before that or anything. But just like how he showed up, how he conducted himself, how serious he was about everything he did. I was kind of like, oh, I got to like, I can't be like playing every single week. And like this guy's just doing this. And like I'm not doing the little stuff. Yeah. And it was the craziest because beginning of every season, every coach comes in. It's like, oh, you got to do all the right stuff. If you do all the right stuff, you're going to play more times than not, a coach is going to be like, right, like I, I need to win. I'm going to go with my guys. Like, it's not, a f there's no fair play award. Just because right. you do all the right stuff doesn't mean you're going to get rewarded. But it's hard not to not to think that the coach is like thinking about you as much as you do yourself. Too. You're yeah. like, obviously, you just put yourself he, as like the. And at like the end of the day, if he's not, to, if yeah. he's not winning, his his job's on the line. Yeah. So it's like he's obviously going to look out for him, his best self or what he thinks is best for the group, too. But. I remember we were going into an open cup game and our coach at the time, Mark DeSantos, was like out of nowhere. He hadn't, I think it might have been like 10 games into the season or something. Greg had probably not even played a minute. And it was like, Greg, you're starting. And he gave him the armband. And we had an older group and everyone was like, this is, that was, that was a move. Like yeah. we respected that. Yeah. yeah. And it just showed that like you do all the right stuff and you get rewarded. And the group that we had, it was like, it was necessary for us. And then you had guys who kind of like, put their ego at the at the door and came in and just did the business and it it was just one of those ones that kind of i think took us to a, a bigger level as a group yeah and it was just cool it was cool to see i'm sure there's a lot of guys that like i mean you've played with a lot of <laughs> crazy vets that have been around the game i mean eddie's like number one but it was over the course like you've had a ton are those guys saying anything to like like to you like is there any that you like remember that you know what I mean? I remember because, like you, it, like you said, everyone wants like uh, everyone wants to succeed. So it's like the older guys, you know, that like want you to do that. It's funny. What are they it's saying crazy. when you're just like one and hissing it's, around? It's, it feels even ridiculous. That, like I'm gonna say it, but Drugba in Montreal gave me like a crazy chat, and it was when I was being like hands down the worst. It was that season. It was the last season I had in Montreal. I had great parts of, of the year. I think there yeah. was times when I was fantastic. I was playing and, and we had a good group. There was a lot of ups and downs. We went through just like some, I think we were pretty streaky as a team, mm -hmm. just in terms of like how everyone was as a group and like the results that we got. And then towards the end of the season, it was one of those ones where I went from playing, I was in the 18 all the time. I was starting for a, a large portions of it. And then I just kind of like fell out. And when I fell out 100%, my reaction was, like, was poor. And I kind of chucked it and I, I just got like mad. And it was, it was me just, I stopped doing all the stuff that was giving me all the success. And I just had all this, like I was pointing the finger, I was blaming whatever. And then I had an opportunity for sure to get back in the thing. But because I wasn't the sharpness I was, I think I kind of looked, I showed poorly and, and whatever. And I remember he pulled me after, it was actually on a night out one time. And he just like said, like, you cannot let them win and dictate what you're doing. And it's like, it's, it's so simple and it's not rocket science. It's just true. It was like, I let them win. And it was like, and at the end of the day, the worst thing, so many, I think young people hear this all the time, but it's like, 
I gave them when they, when the, when a coach is looking for like the easy excuse not to play a guy when you have like a lot of depth in the team, and you start throwing your hands, your body language is trash, you're doing all the stuff, you're not necessarily doing all the all the little things right. It's like that's the easiest thing. So you go and you knock on the door and it's like, well, have you done this? And you're sitting there as playing like. Ah. Yeah, like you just make it easy. Yeah. Make it easy I, for them to not play. It, yeah, I gave them every reason not yeah. to do it. So yeah. then it was like, in hindsight, it's like that was the worst, and that that sucked. And then to hear a guy like that in the the, the dressing rooms, the games, the everything that he's done and achieved and been in, and to say it and like to have the the wherewithal to tell a young little Canadian kid at the time was like that was special. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, did did you actually? like from the drogba chat oh yeah well the thing was is, i mean i wish i had more time but like that was there was a huge change because that's when it was towards the end of the season so i ended up getting released yeah there wasn't after that there there was for sure a change in attitude still still was upset naturally but i never really had an opportunity to get back in it because it was like very close to our little playoff push yeah um was that yeah. end of that was that end of that season yeah really to dallas yeah. no what? no after that it was i got released and then it was san fran the next year so there was like nothing i could do it was the second year in Montreal. You went to Dallas before Montreal? Yeah. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> nah, just Where kidding. <laughs> yeah, classic. Keep that yeah. out of it. But yeah, no, it was uh, that was a big one. And then, honestly, the, it hit even harder because that January, like, the phone stops yeah, ringing yeah. and you're like, ooh, yeah. maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was and all these things. And then, then you go to San Fran and really have to <laughs> reignite the old fire to see if you can, can make it. So that was that was a big one stuck with me for sure just that's, in terms of like doing the right stuff all the time yeah. and no one's per you're always gonna have a day when you show up and you legitimately cannot kick a ball and you stink mm -hmm. but it's like what are you still gonna get out of it and like big one i was even thinking about the other day it's like we got such a a young group and guys who want to go on and achieve special stuff and play at a higher level but it's like if you could just ask yourself like one little thing like have i done or what did i do today to deserve like a shot at somewhere higher and like actually ask yourself yeah i think a lot of times i'm not just saying like this group i just think in, as, as like a, a whole like a global picture it's like mm, you probably didn't do enough just take I it 24 that's hours probably a, time. a fair question for yeah, yeah most people anything that you're doing yeah and it's like i put myself in the same chat like it's hard to do the same over and over at a very high level especially when you don't get a gold star at the end of the day right so it's like, but if you can ask yourself and you can ask yourself, honestly, have I done enough or what did I do today to deserve something bigger than this? Yeah. Start checking those boxes off here. Eventually you're going to be successful. Yeah. In whatever you do. Yeah. It's kind of like the, I mean, everyone who makes it to this level is in kind of the same boat where it's like your talent, your talent takes you pretty much to here. Mm -hmm. So then it's like at some point, it's like that switch where it's other things. It's like that when it switches to a job and you like just figure the talent's still gonna take you the same places that it did before, be the number one guy, like, you know? I mean think again, we've so we played together for very long in our youth careers, playing for like Oakville and you played for Oakville for, for years after I'd left. But like how many guys we played with and against that were at, unbelievable. Yeah. Never did anything. Yeah. And that goes down to so many things. It's like, who did they have looking out for them to maybe like show them that we can open this door at the next level, whatever it may be, whether they went to a school that probably wasn't the best thing for them, whether they chose not to go to school and went a different route and, and it just didn't work out. There's so many reasons. And there's other guys who are just like, this is stupid. I'm done. Who are unbelievable players. Yeah. And there's guys who I've played with who I've thought were awful at soccer but they were very professional in everything they did and they went in the game and they were absolute competitors and that's valuable. There's yeah. so many different ways to do this and there's so many different, like that's why I think this sport is unbelievable versus other ones. Like I think you can, you can just be an absolute brute, but like you can have an IQ and you can be an unbelievable defender and you can be the best communicator and whatever and, and be or so valuable to teams. But it comes down to if you want to do it or not at the end of the day. Ah. It's funny. It's funny having these chats because now, like, even I'm, like, the the uh, oh, this is this is a callback to our. Uh, do you remember the segment, uh, helpful or harmful? <laughs> so like, think of the when you were playing. Uh, this is this is the one for me because honestly, like, even back then, obviously, like, just we're just watching you every week, <laughs> and it's and it's the same like for us watching you. It's like ah, this it's like 
professional sports is so crazy. It's all like luck and timing and like you place like all the importance on that. Like I remember that one I mean, I think with TFC, you hit the post like seven million times. So it was always just like ah, I feel like a couple inches, like yeah. that. You know, makes a or like that Colorado game. You hit the put, hit the post twice, like both on set yeah. pieces, right? And like towards the end of the game too. And for so long, I like even me, I was like, yeah, pop, pop those couple in against Colorado. You're you're there, you know? Yeah, but the biggest thing is okay, great performance. The ball didn't go my way, but like, what did I do maybe on that Monday after that game well, to that- solidify more? Yeah, thanks. That's, for, yeah. Thanks for making my point. That's yeah, but that's the sh- that's what I look back <laughs> yeah, at. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we we one hundred percent. I got caught up in that. You're like, oh, it's like, it's like poor me. Oh, yeah, if yeah. this happened, everything would have been different. But the reality is, it's like, mm, did you show up and do your job the next day after you had a little bit of success, or did you think you're yeah you're a little better than you might have been? Yeah, got a little too fun. Started to have a little bit too many. Uh, party taps <laughs> started going yeah no it was good yeah I mean yeah and that's I don't know everything in moderation you have a couple one hour sleeps and practice in the morning but <laughs> maybe not as many as hey cut those down yeah. I haven't slept through training so but we're yeah, good. Was, uh, they were all uh, for learning purposes you can share your wisdom yeah we're better for it we're better <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, captain's log we're better for it and we're positive Three in the front. <laughs> That's All right. it. All right. Big win on to the playoffs. How do you feel about the rest of the season? Good. Great. Excited. We're going to put up another uh, microwave plate for sure. Yeah. Got to start her off. Got to get the old dinner set. We got to get it complete. We almost have a full family. <laughs> Not bad. All right. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. Thanks for hanging out. Um, We'll see you again next week. That's it. We got any any guests coming up? Big guests. Drogba. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming through yeah, next week. I think he's, he's going to sit right here. And it's going to smell great down here. Oh, he, that's facts. Best smelling player of all time. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thanks for listening. This was The Captain's Log with Kyle Becker and Mitch Houlihan, presented by Bench Brewing. The guys will drop another episode sometime oh, whenever they get to it. In the meantime, we would love and appreciate for you to like, follow, subscribe, click on the little bell, do all the things in all the places you get entertained, and you'll find more of this type of content. And that also means we get to spend more time together on the Forge Audio Network.